Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built for the final build episode of John Lemon. First of all, I'll take you through a few of the things that I've, uh, I've done in the last week. And um, yesterday I took it for another drive um, down to Super Cheap to actually pick up a new condenser and, uh, and the new shocks for the car. And um, I noticed that it was down on power and some of the comments came in last week, particularly when I retuned the, the, um, this uh, dodgy Chinese carby. Um, and I thought it was strange as well that I had the mixture wa screw wound all the way in. And I know I tuned it earlier and it, it wasn't like that. So um, a bit of investigation and somebody commented that maybe the timing was out. And I was thinking, well, I set the timing earlier, but what I've found in, uh, and what I remember is the clamp holding the distributor on is, it's, it's actually rounded off. And it was, the just timing at the time was okay. But I've noticed that the distributor is actually loose and, or, or not super loose, it's reasonably tight, but it's, it's, it's loose enough that it's obviously just moved out over time. And um, I rechecked the timing and I was actually only running 27 degrees advance at 3000 RPM and it should be 32. So it was quite retarded. Uh, and um, I got the timing light out, advanced the timing and wow, what a difference. Um, I'd say it feels like it's got about 50% more power. Um, yeah, it's running so much better. But the warm start issues are not sorted out yet. So I still have problems there. I've got a bit more investigation to do. What my current theory is, is potentially, uh, apparently the floats inside these, uh, these cheap carbies, um, they sort of get slightly logged with, with petrol, like it's into the plastic. It doesn't actually, uh, it doesn't actually have any inside the, the float itself. It's, it's dry in there, it's not, not sloshing around with a hole in it. But um, what I'm thinking is it might not actually be floating up quite high enough in the surface to block off that, um, that little valve properly, because the valve seems to work, but maybe the, uh, the float is not quite giving it to it hitting the top as, as much as it should. So maybe what the issue is, is, um, uh, is the fuel is slowly leaking past that. Because it seems that when it's warm, if I turn it off and turn, the, turn it straight back on again, starts, no problems. It's only when I leave it for sort of 10 or 15 minutes and then come back out and then it's really tough to start. And, and not always, often I can start it and if I sort of catch it on the first try, it starts, no problems. But if I don't, if I just sort of miss that first little, little chance, then it just, then it just struggles and it's, and, and I have my foot slowly pressed flat to the floor and have it wide open and I can just get it to catch after a, a bit of cranking and it, you know, obviously it's really, really rich, it seems like. So that's where I'm currently at. Um, lots of people suggested other things. The coil had been replaced. So, so basically when I got this car, it was having that problem already. And since I've done it, I've replaced the coil, replaced the distributor cap, replaced the spark plug leads, done the points, done the timing, done pretty much everything on the car, except for this condenser. So this one, the wires are hanging out, it's looking pretty dodgy, so I'm gonna replace it um, just as a matter of course. I quickly changed the condenser over, it just clips in, it's, it's very, very quick and simple. And um, this underside of this uh, you know, hatch has been bothering me, so I'm gonna give it a very, very quick and lovely, um, just, just a quick spray of black now, just, just to uh, tidy it up a bit. That was a very quick and lovely, but a um, uh, little bit of overspray I knew would come through the louvers. I just went through with a little bit of thinners, just wiped it up quickly, and um, it's done. It's not perfect, but it looks much nicer than the dodgy overspray that was under there before. All right, now let's do the front shocks.
All right, wheels are off. Shock should be pretty easy. Those of you who watched uh, previously when I did it, uh, basically bolt to the top, bolt to the bottom, unclip the brake line, and uh, and sort of wheel the uh, the shock out of the, uh, the the mount. Out she comes. Pretty easy. It's a it's all all uh, struts all one piece. So these should go reasonably easy. The back I haven't had out, so we'll see how that goes. I've got the uh, the shocks out, and you can see here the old shock compared to the new shock, and I can just push that down by hand. This one, I can, but it's much tighter, and it springs back up again. That means this shock is good, this shock is toast. Time to put it all back in again. Oh, and I have new bump stops as well, because um, this one is, uh, yeah, <laughs> not really stopping much. This should be much better. All right, that's one done. Just uh, leaving it on the ground here. It's already dripping this old uh, shock. So one down, let's go to the other side and do the other side. And that'll be the fronts. Then it'll be time to tackle the rears. That was pretty straightforward. Uh, pull the old one out, put the new one in, put the bump stop in. Now it's time to tackle the rears. All right, that was much more difficult than I was expecting. Um, on these Super Beetles, at least, I think they're slightly different to the earlier cars, but there's like a, the, the rear hub is sort of attached to a swing arm going back, and it pivots off of the body, and it pivots off of this massive uh, bolt. It's an Allen key, Allen head bolt that's uh, huge, and it was a real pain to get out because it was stiff and stuck, but I've got it out. Um, now, the, um, the torsion bar is actually sitting on a lip down here, so, it's, it's sprung under tension, so you've got to be really careful with it, but I'm going to get in behind it and bash it and knock it off of that lip to release the tension, and then I can move forward and uh, adjust it and hopefully lower this car just a little bit. My challenge now is, here's the torsion bar that sits inside this hole. And there's, there's basically a spline on the inboard end and there's a spline on the outboard end. And depending on where you stick that, they, they actually have slightly different uh, angles on them. So um, if I just move the outer, outboard spline one notch further lower, it actually would take the car down about 5.5 centimeters, which is um, a lot more than what I really want. I just want, um, all, all I want to do is, is if I move the inner spline 
rotate it towards the car five notches and rotate the outer spline back towards the back of the car five notches would actually give me about a three, or about a 2.7 centimeter drop. There's actually a, uh, a graph that I found online that shows you how much to, to move the uh, splines. So now it's a matter of trying to sort of feel where those notches are and see if I can do it accurately so that I get the, uh, the car sitting at the right point. <clears throat> okay, so I, uh, I worked it all back and forth. It took a bit. I marked it before and after I moved it. So I can sort of see, I marked on the uh, arm here, I sort of scratched on the body level with the arm to sort of see where it originally was when it had fully dropped down. And, um, and now it's sitting slightly higher and that's also um, a measure I used to make sure that I was getting it just about right. Um, so now um, I'm just gonna put a bit of anti-seize on the bolts bolt it back up again and fingers crossed it's sitting just that little bit lower it's also worth noting you should generally replace the bushes the uh the rubber bushes and stuff in there when you do this i didn't realize that until uh about an hour ago when i was researching this so um it's not getting done this time but uh, maybe next time All right, that was a bit of a wrestle, but the new shock is in. The car on this side is lowered, so now it's time to go over the other side and do the whole thing again. Okay, the new shocks are in all the way around. The wheels are back on. So now is the moment of truth. I'm gonna lower it down and uh, let's see if it's much lower, if it's too low. I really hope it's not too low. I don't wanna pull it all off again. It was, it was a lot more messing around than I wanted to. Old bolts and things that are hard to get out. Like, it's not complicated, it's just messy. So um, let's lower it down and see what it looks like. Well, um, at the moment, because I have new shocks all the way around, the car's sitting really high. The front particularly is super high. Um, yeah. So I think the only thing to do now is to take it for a bit of a drive, see how it's running, and um, see if I can get them to settle down a bit. And um, yeah, hopefully it lowers down a bit more because I want it lower, not higher. Okay, so it's time to... Um Take the car out and see how she handles. Oh, just uh, on another point, I managed to put a little button in the dash and the horn works. It's not ideal, but it was just gonna be too difficult to get a steering wheel. I'd have to get another steering wheel that would uh, work with the horn and try and get the original parts. And this is one year only, it's too complicated. The horn works, all right. shocks it's so much smoother all right well it seems to run reasonably well so um let's see it's a few sort of clunks but it made clunks before all right so it uh, it drives quite nicely unfortunately now the back sits perfect and now the front is sitting high those those shocks really raised up the front quite a bit 
In any case, um, hopefully it will settle down over the next few days. I am not going to play with it at this stage, but I'll leave it. As far as the basic assembly of this beetle is, it's done. So that must mean it is time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, in 1973, the new Superbug L replaced the Superbug S with its new curved windscreen, padded dash, and larger round elephant foot tail lights. 1974 saw the biggest shift in Volkswagen's history in Australia with the release of what are called cars in the form of the Passat. The Passat is named the 1974 Wheels Magazine Car of the Year, a first in Australia for Volkswagen, but the beginning of the end for the Beetle. The last Australian assembled Beetle rolled off the production line in July 1976, with the Mark I Golf filling the gap in Volkswagen's lineup. All right, that marks the end of the Beetle build series. Now, um, hopefully this front end will settle down a bit because I'm really annoyed. Now the front is sitting higher, and if I hadn't actually adjusted the rear, it might actually be sitting sort of semi-level, but now it's sitting the other way, and it just drives me crazy. So I may do it later, but... Uh, we don't like you to make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> in any case, um, you'll still see the Beetle on the channel. I'll be uh, filling you on with updates. I've still got to sort out that uh, warm start issue, but um, mm. it won't be uh, the full videos like it has been, just uh, little update videos as we go. Um, next week, we'll be back into double Datsun videos. Okay, so as a bit of a wrap-up for the Beetle, we're going to be doing a live stream this Sunday at 11 a.m. Sydney time. It's uh, Greenwich Mean Time plus 11, so that's uh, about midnight in uh, London. Uh, I believe it's about 5 in the afternoon, Saturday afternoon um, in L.A. and about 8 p.m. New York and wherever else you are, try and see if you can work it out. Please come, ask us whatever questions. Um... Yeah, we hope to see you there. Yeah. And in a new exciting twist, I now have an Instagram account. <laughs> yes, follow Mrs. Jeff. She's just signed up to Instagram. It's Mrs. Underscore Jeff One. It's all very new and exciting. So. Yes, uh, she's coming to the 21st century and starting to get the I feel in. like I'm the last person in the world to do this. But anyway. yes, give Mrs. Jeff a follow. And if you're not following, um, follow, <laughs> follow Home Boot by Jeff. I give you uh, a few inside tips on what's going on in the coming weeks. So, all right, guys. And anyway, um, we're going to keep driving the Beetle. Yeah. <laughs> See, See you guys. guys. Hey, guys. <laughs> hey, Elephant Foot, the set of reference for my toenail. With its curved dash, padded dash, and elephant toenails. No? So there's no toenails. Elephant Foot, tail lights. And larger, round, elephant tail feet. Oh, so close.